welcome back to Helicopter Lessons in 10 Minutes or Less. It's Jacob again, and today's topic is Vortex Ring State slash Settling with Power. But before I get started, I just want to take a quick minute to thank you guys for your likes, your subscriptions, and your comments. I really didn't expect this channel to generate as much buzz and feedback as it has in such a short amount of time. But that being said, I guess uh, these classes are helping to answer some of your questions that you have. Uh, this class in particular is addressing Settling with Power, which was a request for a subject to be covered in a previous video. So if you like what you're seeing, um, make sure you like and subscribe to the channel if you want to see more. Leave a comment, let me know what you think, and uh, we'll work from there. All right, so let's get started. Now today we're talking about vortex ring state and settling with power. Now a lot of references will address these both as one and the same, but they're actually two uh, separate terms, but they're very closely related. So Vortex ring state is a series of vortices that are developing in a rotor system. Uh, multiple uh, vortices in addition to just the, the wingtip vortices. And then settling with power is a condition where the helicopter tends to settle in its own downwash as a result of a vortex ring state. Alright, so under normal power flight, let's see what that looks like. So, before watching this, I ask that you uh, take a look at my airflow at a hover video. It's going to kind of lay out the basics for this one. But under normal f powered flight, let's look at our rotor disc. Here's our mast. Uh, what we're going to have right here is the uh, the airflow moves downwards through the rotor disc. In a method like this. So this is this downwards flow of, of airflow through the rotor disc is more pronounced at the blade tip than it is the the blade root due to the differences in speed of the blade. Obviously it's turning faster at the blade tip than it is the blade root. We have the pitch angle uh, in the blade and so this is causing more downwards flow towards the outside of the blade than on the inside of the blade. So that being said, kind of looks like this. And on the wing tip or on the, the tips of the rotor blades, we still have our wingtip vortices. All right, as we start to get into the early stages of settling with power, we're going to see a shift in the airflow. So what exactly is going on right here? So vortex ring state, settling with power, what's going on is the aircraft is starting to enter a, a steep approach. You're going to have upwards flow of air through the rotor system that's potentially going to change the airflow around the, the rotor system. So what does that look like? Here's our rotor system again. Here's our mast. Once again, we have this downwards flow of air being more pronounced at the blade tips. But as we start to have that steep approach, uh, that upwards flow of air through the rotor system, with uh, a low power uh, applied, we can potentially see a, uh, an upflow overcoming uh, the effects of blade rotation and pitch angle. So now we're starting to see an upwards flow of air near the blade root and a downwards flow of air near the blade blade tips. So we're seeing something like this going on with the blade. Obviously we're still having our wingtip vortices here on the outside. So this is the early stages. If this is allowed to develop even further, we're going to get into a full-blown vortex ring state. So what does that mean? So rotor system, there's our mast. What's happened is this upwards flow of air as we've had before, has now not just generated an upwards flow of air, but now has started to turn in on itself and generate vortices near the blade root. This downwards flow of air from the outside, or near the, uh, the blade tips, is continuing to generate that wingtip vortices. All right, so now we have downwards flow of air on the outside of the rotor disc upwards flow of air on the inside of the rotor disc and we're starting to see a vortex ring state. A vortex ring state is literally uh, a secondary set of vortices that are beginning to engulf the, the rotor disc. So we have our, our normal wingtip vortices but now we have a secondary uh, blade hub rotor uh, vortices developing here. Uh, so what's that what does that do into your rotor system? Obviously, there's a lot of turbulent air. We're going to see a, res a reduction in efficiency of the rotor system. Uh, in the initial stages, there's going to be a lot of vibrations due to the differences in lift and drag across the rotor system. You're going to have reduced cyclic authority. And most importantly, you're going to have a loss of collective pitch effectiveness. So what does that mean? So you've developed a rate of descent. And then now, as you begin to increase collective to arrest that rate of descent, 
it's going to further exacerbate this and now a collective increase is going to result in an increased rate of descent. So pretty, uh, pretty interesting thing to see as a new aviator. Uh, when you begin to increase collective and you start to fall faster. Definitely can throw you off your game uh, if you've never seen this before. But that being said, vortex ring state is the developing of these vortices across the helicopter. Sailing with power is when uh, the helicopter continues to fall through on its descent even though it has power applied because it's, it's sailing into its own downwash, its own wingtip vortices. It's sailing with power applied. All right, so that wraps up the uh, part one of vortex ring state slash setting ceiling with power video. In the next video, I'll be going over the three requirements that you have to have to get into a vortex ring state, as well as some of the conditions that are conducive to a vortex ring state, uh, along with how do you recover from a vortex ring state. So thanks for watching. Make sure you tune into part two.